Yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail, just know I'll go again. I never quit, cause I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again. See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch. I'm setting the stage, you should give me my props. You ain't got a soul, you lacking the spirit. You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it. I've been really happy you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again. I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them. So if I ever win again, it's nobody the minimum. I didn't have to sell my soul. Oh, yeah. Please don't play no games with me. It was never about the fame to me. They needed the best, so they came to me. Whoa. Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Expectations for Jared Kelnick have always been high, and up until his Major League debut, he never missed on expectations. I also don't know if he knew what the word failure meant up to that point. Don't get me wrong, he worked incredibly hard to get to that spot, and he is the definition of a competitor. But baseball is a humbling game, and sometimes you just need a slice of humble pie. The pie that Kelnick bit off in his first two years of Major League Baseball helped shift his mindset and turn him into the person that we're seeing now in 2023. Definitely uh, a roller coaster, uh, up and downs for sure. Um, but the biggest thing was just trying to stay positive and, you know, keep my family in the loop and just uh, lean on them as much as I possibly could. That pie he was eating, of course, also had some creatine and protein in it. Dude looks like he walked off the Olympia stage and onto the baseball field. But so far this year, he really has been the best bat for the Mariners in a year where the bats have cooled off. And the bat is just one piece of what Kelnick brings to the plate as far as his overall baseball ability. I have been looking forward to this player profile for a while. Since the trade that brought him to Seattle, there hasn't been a Mariners prospect with more expectations than with Kelnick. Julio burst onto the scene, of course, but he kind of came out of nowhere. With Kelnick, it was a bit different. Production was expected from day one. And now that he's living up to those expectations, we can celebrate the success that we've seen. So let's get into who Jared is and how he got to this point. But before we do, just a reminder to please like and subscribe if you're a fan of baseball. And make sure to check out the rest of my player profile series, where it's my goal to educate fans of baseball on why they should be paying attention to certain players. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or refinance your home, make sure to reach out to myself, the Couch GM, to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. My information will be listed in the description below. Jared Kelnick's story starts about 30 minutes west of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where he grew up in the city of Waukesha. Back around 2012, his dad Tom, along with investors, bought a piece of property in Waukesha and turned it into a baseball complex. Eventually, a couple of those fields would be turned into indoor facilities, which is where Jared would train year-round throughout high school and even during the first couple off-seasons of his professional career. Baseball was always Jared's sport, and he was consistently trying to find the best competition he could play against. When he was 12 years old, he was playing up with the 14-year-olds, and by the time he was 14, he was playing with 18-year-olds. He says at that point, his goal was to play in college, and after his freshman year of high school, he committed to playing at the University of Louisville. He says that after committing to Louisville, his eyes were opened, and his focus moved towards being drafted in the MLB draft. And not just drafted, he wanted to be the first player out of Wisconsin to be drafted in the first 10 picks of the draft. Fellow Wisconsin native and Kelnick's friend Gavin Lux had been drafted by the Dodgers with the 20th pick in the 2016 MLB Draft, who was the highest picked Wisconsin player at the time. Kelnick would play on various showcase teams, and in 2016 he was named the most valuable player of USA Baseball's under-18 team that won the gold medal at the Pan American Games. In an article written by The Athletic, it states that Kelnick would get up at 4.30 a.m. and work out at NX level before school, giving him time to hit afterwards as well. And Kelnick was quoted at the time saying, I don't care if you put a 10-time All-Star or a minor league baseball player, there's nobody that's going to outwork me. It's that simple. If I find out that they are even close, I'm going to work even harder because that's something I take pride in. That's how I'm wired. And I don't want to do anything else in life besides play this game for a living right now. By the time he reached his senior year of high school, he was ranked fourth overall in the country, the number one outfielder, and the best player in all of Wisconsin. 
His scouting profile states that he can really hit. The ball flies off his barrel. Showed big five tool potential at Perfect Game National and Perfect Game All-American. Outstanding all fall of 2016, including MVP of the WWBA Colonels. And at the time, he was 6'1", 196. There was speculation heading up to the draft that Kelnick could be selected number one overall, but Casey Mize would be selected by the Tigers, and Kelnick would be called by the New York Mets, offering him a $4.5 million signing bonus, contingent on Florida's Jonathan India being off the table. India would be drafted fifth overall by the Reds. With the sixth selection of the 2018 MLB draft, the New York Mets select Jared Kelnick. <laughs> And as Jared showed, if baseball didn't work out, American Idol might be a solid fallback. I play center field I'm from Waukesha, Wisconsin. I'm somebody that brings a lot of passion to the game, but sometimes I like to mess around at the same time. What some people don't know about me is I like romantic movies. Heart Attack by Demi Lovato. Make me wanna act like a girl. Pay my dues and wear high heels. Yes, you make me so nervous that you just can't hold your hand. Well, I guess it's a good thing baseball's working out for him. But he got his wish being drafted in the top 10, becoming the first Wisconsin native to do so. The draft would roll on and it's worth noting that the Seattle Mariners would pick 14th and in this spot they would select Logan Gilbert out of Stetson University. And for the new Mets draft D, the expectations were continuing to grow. Jared would report to rookie camp for the Mets and would play in 56 games throughout the remainder of the 2018 season. After the 2018 season, the Mariners and the Mets both missed the playoffs, but the Mariners decided to enter a rebuild and the Mets decided to add to their Major League roster. Among many other moves that offseason, on December 3rd, 2018, it was announced that the Seattle Mariners had traded second baseman Robinson Cano and relief pitcher Edwin Diaz and Cash to the New York Mets in exchange for right fielder Jay Bruce, right-handed pitcher Anthony Swarzak, right-handed pitcher Gerson Batista, center fielder Jared Kelnick, and starting pitcher Justin Dunn. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. That's a, that's like the shortest that he's ever going to be. <laughs> yeah, and you know what I want you to do? And this is gonna be the first one you get. I want you to sign a ball and put up with these. Yeah. Okay. These yeah. are all the merit that really? as they come through, we just put a ball up there. So we're gonna get a we're gonna get a head start. Does Sam have one up there yet? No, Sam doesn't. Actually, of the everybody up there has played for a big game. So, really? Yeah. You'll be the first of your kind. So you're foreshadowing something? That's right. <laughs> Dominant. That's awesome. I had a text from my buddy Justin Dunn, and he goes, he sent me a screenshot of a tweet that said, "This just in." Um, Mets Mariners deal complete. Like, yeah, like Diaz Cano to the Mets, Dunn, Jared, Bruce, and like a bunch of other guys to the Mariners. And you know, it was it was pretty surreal to be honest. Because like to be included in a trade like that, man, it's it's just it's something special. And usually, every trade is for the better. And you know, I'm going to a team that wants me. And not to say that I wasn't at a team with the Mets and they didn't want me. It's just the way it worked out. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's good to be wanted somewhere. So I'm looking forward to it. In 2019, Jared would go on to tear it up across three levels in the minor leagues for the Mariners, playing in 117 games total with a 291 batting average, 23 home runs, 68 RBIs, 20 stolen bases, and an OPS of 904. Living up to his then hype of being the Mariners' number two overall prospect and the MLB's number 56 overall prospect, at the time just 19 years old. The 2020 minor league season was canceled due to COVID. However, heading into the 2021 season, there was a bit of controversy around Kelnick. To start off, it was leaked that in 2020, the Mariners had reached out to Kelnick's representation in hopes of extending him. 
In the range of what Aloy Jimenez and Luis Robert had received from the White Sox, to the tune of around six years and $43 million, to six years and $50 million. Kelnick had declined this offer. The Mariners then president at the time, Kevin Mather, said some controversial words during an interview that offseason, during which he openly talked about how the Mariners have manipulated service time of their top prospects. Kelnick's representation, Brody Schofield, said it was communicated to Jared that had he signed the contract, he would have debuted last year. It was made crystal clear to Jared, then and now, that his decision not to call him up is based on service time. There's no question that if he signed that contract, he would have been in the big leagues. So essentially, Kelnick was being punished for not signing that contract extension, which is not a good look for the Mariners, especially when someone who's so confident in themselves like Kelnick thinks that he is ready for the big leagues. In the spring of 2021, Jared would play in 10 games, batting 300 with a couple home runs, and yet he would not make the opening day roster. Scott Service and Jerry DePoto said that he has a few areas that he needed to improve on before making the roster. Well, after just a week in AAA Tacoma, Jared Kelnick would get the call and make his MLB debut on May 13th, 2021. My entire life it's been, you know, work hard because you want to be in the big leagues. Then got to middle school and it was play hard because you, you want to go to the big leagues. And then it was, I went to high school keep working hard because you want to go to the big leagues. I get drafted and it was work hard, you want to go to the big leagues. I got promoted, got promoted again, work hard, I want to get to the big leagues, work hard, and then I'm going to be in the big leagues tomorrow. But it wasn't just Jared that would be making his MLB debut on May 13th, as Logan Gilbert, a fellow first rounder in the 2018 MLB draft, would also be making his MLB debut on the same day. Jared would go 0 for 4 with a strikeout in his debut, while Gilbert would go four innings giving up four earned runs, but we all know that there were better days ahead. In Jared's second career game, three for four with two doubles and a home run. Jared Kelnick looking for his first big league hit. This is torched! Way Well, unfortunately, after that three-hit game in his second career game, he would go five for his next 75, and after June 6, he would get demoted back to AAA Tacoma. But go figure, during his 30 games in Tacoma in 2021, he would mash to the tune of a 320 batting average with nine home runs and 28 RBIs, a 1.016 OPS. He would be recalled to the Mariners on July 16th. Over 93 games played in the major leagues in 2021, Kelnick batted 181 with 14 home runs, 43 RBIs, an OPS of 615, which is an OPS plus of just 72, basically 30% below league average, and he had a difficult time recognizing the pitches down and away, changeups from righties, and breaking pitches from lefties. The Mariners would miss out on their playoff chances in the final weekend of the season, and Kelnick was rightfully upset. But it was time to move on to 2022. If you try to do too much, like you'll get exposed, and that's kind of a lot what you saw early when I came up last year. Is I just kept trying to do more, do more, do more, and then it finally got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I already know that I'm not having, I'm, I'm not having the year that I'd like, and I just, you know, was like, who cares? Go out, let's have fun and then I started to hit. I can't tell you like how much more, last year really has, uh, I'm now, st when I step back, I'm glad that yes, last year happened the way that it did. And would I have rather hit 300? Sure, but I know that like last year made me like not even a better baseball player, but a, like a, just a better all around person. Like I'm very genuine with people and you know, who knows if, if, if it was different, who knows who I'd be today, but it really opened up my eye last year is to not take it so serious and enjoy the people, enjoy the relationships that you have. 
2022 was a lot of the same struggles that he had seen the year before. Over just 54 games in 2022, he finished with a 141 batting average with 7 home runs and 17 RBIs, a 534 OPS which is a 55 OPS plus, 45% below league average at the plate. And at this point, you really just had to feel for the guy as he was doing all he could to improve his approach at the plate. But he did still show flashes of his potential. Kelnick in. Rodriguez goes. Kelnick sends one to right center field. That one's gone! Jared Kelnick with a pinch hit home run. And Seattle has taken the lead. Oh, did you? That brings us into 2023, where as of today, Jared Kelnick is batting 255 with 11 home runs, 34 RBIs, 8 stolen bases, an OPS of 793, which is an OPS plus of 124, about 24% above league average. He's already set a career high in stolen bases, and he's on pace to set career highs in every category. And while his whiff and strikeout percentage are still very high, his average exit velocity, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, expected slugging, and other categories are better than they were in the past. And you can just tell watching him play the game, he is much more relaxed this year. And I noticed this spring that he had switched up his stance again, and turns out that this was his first offseason to where he did not go back home to Wisconsin, but instead he stayed in California and trained with an unnamed hitting coach. So the guys that I worked with in the offseason, uh, the biggest thing that they wanted to get me to do was kind of get some rhythm going. Yeah. Uh, I was a real static hitter, I was kind of like really tense. Um, and it wasn't allowing my bat path to kind of work in the, the right direction. And so, you know, working with uh, the hitting coaches that I, you know, was working with, they were telling me that I think a, a hand drop is going to get sync up your upper body and your lower body a little bit more and allow you to work inside the baseball more north to south and stay through it. Um, and that was, you know, foreign to me. I was somebody that my entire life, my hands have been really static, you know, mm. ever since I was a kid. And uh, so to work with him and, you know, change it, uh, it was, I loved it. Well, whatever he did, it's working. Hit well, deep right center field. It's got a ride going, it's off the fence. Cal's gonna score. Field. Cal right away, center field. He really hit this ball 482 feet and it looked like he didn't even get all of it. And this game made it four games in a row with a home run. Fly ball center field, going back, going back, at the wall, he's done it again! And we don't talk about it enough, but he is an elite defender as well, a true five-tool athlete, and the sky is still the limit for Kelnick. Thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe for more baseball content throughout the season, and we'll see you next time. Alright guys, goodbye Zondi, don't forget it. Stop it!